Welcome back to Equip to Endure. I am Rusty. Today we're going to be potentially starting a new series called the Survival Makeover Series. Now, I've been sitting on this project for a while. This is my forerunner in the back. It's an absolute travesty. It's a mess right now. Now, I have lots of good things in there, but we need to pull it out, get organized, and we're going to walk through each item and what you should put in your car to help you in pretty much any sort of emergency situation you're in. Now, this is relevant because just last week, there was a thousand people stranded in Death Valley National Park in California. About 60 cars were trapped because they got a flash flood and it carried all this dirt and debris and it basically kind of semi buried all these cars. So they were stuck for a while. And then just back in January, you may remember over in Virginia on I-95, there was about a 40 mile stretch of freeway that basically came to a standstill in the winter because of a snowstorm. So people were freezing in their cars all night for 24 hours. So these are kind of situations aren't that uncommon. There's lots of different things that may happen, whether it's just a roadside emergency or it's due to some sort of natural disaster or anything like that. So we're gonna go ahead and open this guy up. Now, before I do so, I'm willing to remove this if you guys promise not to write down my license plate number. I'm trusting you, okay. All right, so I've got lots of good stuff in here, but it is a mess, so don't judge me. Remember, I'm, I'm doing this for you. There she is. All right, so we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna get this thing unloaded, and then we're gonna start from the base of what should be included in your car. All right, one other quick thing, I just wanted to talk about the philosophy a little bit about your car. So, the way that you should think about your car is essentially like it's a little mobile apartment or like a tiny house. I even heard one of our friends in the military call it a, a staging area. So if you think about it, this, this is a big mobile locker. So there's no reason that you can't put several things in here that will help you wherever you're at in any situation. So think about your car like that. This is a big mobile locker that you can keep loaded with things you may need in any situation. All right, so we've got a clean canvas now. We're gonna go ahead and get started. But first, I mentioned earlier that we're potentially gonna turn this into a series. Now we have other ideas, other rooms in the house and other things to do for the you know, survival makeover type thing. So if you get 100 likes on this video, we'll take that as a sign that you wanna see more videos like this, the survival makeover. So let's go ahead and start with our car. Now, the first things we're gonna put in from an emergency standpoint are gonna be the standard roadside type emergencies. So let's go ahead and start. Number one, jumper cables, right? Throw in some good quality jumper cables in there. These are six gauge, 16 footers. So, you know, you don't have to get your hood right next to the other person's hood. You got some, some range on these. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these in. We'll try to arrange these nice and tidy as we put in. Now this one, this one I'm really excited about. So with jumper cables, you're dependent on somebody else being near you. But what if you're, you know, in maybe a not great area, you're all by yourself and you're maybe not feeling great about asking somebody, or maybe you're stranded somewhere, what's the solution? And so there's been this really cool uh, invention over the last few years called a jump box. And that's basically a self-contained battery unit with jumper cables so that you can just pull it in and jump yourself. Really, really cool. Now, big, big shout out to Goal Zero. They chipped in for this video. Now, the reason I actually reached out to them, they didn't reach out to us because previously, about five years ago, I bought their Yeti 1500 and their Boulder, I think it was 200 uh, watt briefcase panels that they have. I absolutely love the thing. And I put it through the ringer. I threw it in a wheelbarrow and I went and used it to build a chicken coop in the back. That thing was getting beat on by the sun in the summer kept kicking, it worked great, charges great with the, the, the panels. So I know that there are lots of other options out there on the market right now, but personally, I spent my money on Goal Zero previously and I had a good experience and I'm confident referring them. So I know there's some other options out there, but we're fans of Goal Zero. So with that said, they sent us this thing, it's called a Venture Jump Kit. Now it's really nice, it's got the zipper packaging, it comes in. This is the actual battery unit and you can go ahead and pull this guy out and then the cables whoop, whoop. And so what you do is on the port side here you just open this guy up and then you plug in the adapter right into there and you are good to go go ahead make sure you put these on the uh, positive and negative terminals we're not doing the uh, the michael scott thing and just plugging them in anywhere okay make sure you put these on the right terminals and then you're good to go to jump it now here's another reason why i like this unit so much i'm going to go ahead and unplug this so it's got other ports there, so you can use it as an external battery pack. You've got USB, you've also got a USB-C in there, and you can also use this thing 
almost like every electronic device now, but it also has the flashlight functionality. I'm not quite sure where the button is on this thing yet. It might be right there. Do you hold this thing down? There it is. You hold the button down. There it comes. So you can use this as a flashlight. Now, we're going to get into road flares in just a minute. Well, I'll go ahead and cover them now. Again, big thank you to Goal Zero. I think this is a super, super cool little unit, especially how it comes self-contained like this. So let's go ahead and turn that flashlight off. There we go. Now I have some of the old school flares, you know, the burning ones. I see that the LEDs are becoming a lot more popular. Now, one of the things that I keep, one of the things that I keep in my car is actually a headlight. Let me show you that real quick. So in almost any situation, the only real exception to this that I can think of is maybe a tactical scenario where you want a flashlight in your hand versus on your head. I would so much rather have a headlamp. So let's talk roadside emergency type experience. If you need to get out and change your tire or something, do you, do you want to be holding a flashlight or do you just want to have a headlamp so you have your hands free? In almost any situation, I'd rather have a headlamp. So one of the functions that this has is this has a strobe on it. So I can take this multifunction. I could go ahead and set this on the ground or on the top of my car or something. And this could be like one of those LED roadside flares. So I've got multiple use there. And again, I'm not saying not to get the separate standalone LED flares, but that's one of the reasons that I keep this in my car. Now going on the same thing with things that you should keep in your car, a lot of people keep a glass breaker. Now I like the multifunction thing, so this is a pen that I have. All this stuff we're gonna put in an article so they have links to it. It's gonna be down in the description, just so you know in advance. But this has a glass breaker on the tip. I keep this right in my console so I can reach in, grab it, break the glass if I need to. So. so that's right there. Also, if you're looking for a seatbelt cutter, I always keep a fixed blade in my console. This is an ultra lightweight hiking knife that I can go ahead and cut if I need to, and it's access there. Plus I always, has, always have my EDC knife on me. So continuing with standard roadside emergency stuff, I ran across this, I'm pretty impressed with it. I haven't had to use it yet, I'll put that disclaimer on it, but I bought this. I'll, I'll try to specify if there was something that was given to us or not. So if I don't say I bought it, if I do say it was provided to us. But anyway, this is Slime Company. This is, this is a pretty neat little unit. Let me take it out. So this is kind of an all-in-one tire repair kit. So typically, you know, you need your, your jack, your tire iron, your fix a flat, all of that to get out, jack up your car, pull it off, you know, fix the tire if you don't have a spare, whatever. Anyway, this is a pretty neat little unit. So this has a, a kind of a sealant that pumps into the tire. So what you do is you pull this guy out. Let me find the valve. And it comes with a 12 volt plug-in thing. So you can just plug this in the front of your car, in the back if you've got a 12 volt in the back. So you plug it in, you attach that to your valve stem, and then you can use it just as an air compressor so it has a built-in tire pressure gauge. Again, if you don't have one of these, have a tire pressure gauge so you have that handy. So if it's just a flat, not a puncture, you leave it like that. If it's a puncture, all you do is turn the nozzle or turn the knob there, and when it's attached, you turn this thing on, that's it. You hit the button, it'll fill up the tire with sealant and air it up, and here's the kicker, you don't need a jack. This has enough pressure that it's putting in where you don't need to jack up your car. So it's fast, effective. This is something I feel way better about, like my wife having her, you know, in her car. And uh, I have this in mine, obviously. So this is a really neat unit, Slime. We'll put, obviously, the link down below for you. So we just talked about fixing the flat, you know, that roadside emergency type thing. Now, and this is actually, I just had to deal with this not too long ago. There was a wreck right in front of me. It doesn't have to be a wreck, it could be any sort of boo-boo that happens, but it's really a good idea to have a first aid kit. I mean, you can pick these up at Walmart for five bucks, 10 bucks, I don't remember what this one was, but this has your standard boo-boo kit type stuff, right? So Neosporin, bandages, ibuprofen, whatever you got in there. I also keep a IFAC or trauma kit in my car. Now, shout out to VanQuest, they sent this to us. We did some cool stuff they threw in for our big Christmas giveaway last year but this is their IFAC kit, really cool. So you rip this guy open from the top. So I've got my tape, we've got our Israeli bandage, a nasal pharyngeal, that's how you say it, pharyngeal tube there, some gloves. Um, on the side, I've got the tourniquet and some shears, again, multi-purpose. So this is for your trauma, this is for your boo-boos, and I like to keep both in the car. Now staying on the kind of uh, medical side of things. I always keep some hand sanitizer. I keep this up on my console and I pulled that up for you. And I also keep a mask just in case I need to have it ready. So that's medical stuff. Make sure to have that in your car no matter what.
If you don't already follow us on Facebook, be sure to do that. We actually posted this week and said, hey, we're going to be shooting this video. What ideas do you have for things that you should keep in your car? And we got, and I said the best one will, will include their name. We'll give them a shout out. We actually got two really good ones. So Trevor, this one's for you. So Trevor recommended having a safety vest in your car. Now the obvious reason for doing this is you can throw that vest on. It's got this reflective tape. So if you need to get out at night and change your tire or something like this, this is security for you so that you'll be highly visible for people. But this is where I was like, yeah, that's clever. I thought of it before, but he said include in your car and I thought that's really good. This does a lot of stuff for you. You can hide in plain sight with a safety vest. So if you're kind of in a distressed situation, you can kind of fly under the radar a little bit, you know, throw a hat on, throw one of these on and people will just kind of ignore you. You look like a worker. So that's good. Um, as well as also the, uh, the reflective stuff. And um, one other thing is if you're in some sort of maybe, uh, you know, fighting type surroundings, this could probably help you get prevented uh, or can help you be not get hit by friendly fire is what I meant to say there. So really good recommendation there, Trevor. These things weigh next to nothing. And another thing is with that bright material, these can be used for signaling. So if you're out somewhere and you need a bright piece of material, this is great for that. So great recommendation, Trevor. So again, we're still going down the kind of standard things that would be a good idea to include in your car for roadside type emergencies. So let's get this guy out of the way. I've got a bag of toe straps here. I don't want to pull them all the way out because it's kind of finicky. So there's four toe straps in here. I have a little trailer that sometimes I throw in the back of my forerunner here. So if I need to lash things down, also take some bungee cords, be sure to throw those in there. Again, bungees are super useful for stuff. So some tie down straps. Next up, let's talk about a toe strap. So lots of different options out there, but good idea to have a toe strap on you. Uh, in case you need to get somebody else out or whatever. Now, if you're into overlanding or off-roading, you're going to have a much more robust recovery kit is what it's called. So you're going to see a skyjack, shovels, some tracks that you can run on, winches. You know, there's all sorts of extra stuff. That's not really kind of in the scope of what we're talking about. We're talking for more of a normal car, but for a normal car, it's a, it's a good idea to at least have one toe strap in your car for you. Next, I like to include... I put two sets of work gloves in my car in case somebody else needs them too, but these are just the cheapy ones. I've actually really enjoyed using these over the years. I mean, I put some terrible, terrible, not on these, these are a new pair, but lots and lots of hard work on them. I like how they feel. You still have good um, mobility with them. What's, what am I looking for? Dexterity. Dexterity. Thank you, Chris. You got good dexterity with these types of gloves. So anyway, I just stick those in the side. Let's keep going. We got a few more things to cover and standard things that everybody should have in their car for standard type emergencies. So. If you are from the desert or from hot places, you sure the heck know what this thing is. These are, uh, you know, the custom made for, for this size at least. But any of these sort of sun reflectors that you throw up on the windshield, they keep your car shockingly cooler than if you don't have a reflective surface. So I like to throw that up there, not only to keep it cool when I run into the store, but if you are actually stuck in your car and you're using your car as your primary shelter, do anything you can to keep that thing cool. So this is kind of neat because it is multi-purpose. So this is kind of cool because it's multi-purpose, right? You can obviously block the sun, you can lay it over you, go outside, lay it over you, it's going to reflect the sun, but there's also a little bit of insulated value. I'm not saying that you should use it for this, but there is some foam in there and that can be one little layer to lay on top of if you need to, to reflect some heat back on you, kind of like a, like a space blanket. So anything to create shade, drop the temperature, create insulation is gonna be good for you. Next thing, again, in more, in the climates where you're going to be dealing with ice and snow, it's just a great idea to have your scraper and brush. There's all sorts of different ones. You got the long handle ones with the scraper on one side, a brush on the other. This works for me, but something like this is, you know, really convenient instead of getting your hands all torn up and freezing from doing it with your hands. Just get yourself a nice brush and ice scraper. Finally, well, we got two more things, but water. Now I've got five kids and I'm coaching for them. I coach volleyball and baseball and football right now. So I tend to have one of these cases of water in the back for my kids because uh, easy to grab, easy to use. This is three and a half gallons. I think I added up once. It's roughly three and a half gallons of water. No, maybe five. Anyway, somewhere between three and five gallons that I keep fairly topped off in the back of my car at all times. But if I'm going somewhere, this is one reason we're plugging this hard because we love it. We love to keep aqua bricks. So if we know that we're going out somewhere on a trip, we'll throw an aqua brick in the car because we got three gallons of water here. Comes with the spigot, really convenient. Just grab it and go. Now we're going to put right here a panel of the video that we compared this to the water brick. And I'm going to put a link up there for you to go click on to see how we compared it against the water brick. These things are awesome. 
So go ahead and go buy these over at Sagan Life. We'll put a link down in the description. You get 10% off when you use our code, but we stand behind these things. They're awesome. So we can throw an aqua brick in, but I usually have that too. But if I'm going on a trip, I'll throw one of these in. Okay, final thing that everybody should be keeping in their car. Again, this is another thing we're plugging hard, but we believe in it, we love it. So grab some freeze dried me uh, meals, backpacking meals. This is Peak Refuel, this is our favorite. Again, link up here to a video where we compared 12 of the most popular brands out there. We by far love this. Now we're also big fans of Mountain House. We have a lot of that too, but Peak Refuel is our number one right now. So go ahead, check these guys out and buy it from our website. If you're curious about it, hop on over to equipptoendure.com on the shop. Go ahead and pick some up. These things really are good. Yes, they're a little bit expensive, but you know, we, we talk about these in the other videos. You get what you pay for and you're not gonna be upset. If you're in a bad situation, you open up one of these and you have a nice, hot, tasty meal, you're gonna appreciate it. Okay, now when we're talking about food, obviously this isn't gonna be the only options, right? If you want a full meal, these are great for that, but stick power bars, cliff bars, uh, even hard candy, some people recommend that, a bag of trail mix, anything that will last for a good amount of time in your car and the heat won't significantly impact, those are great. Emergency rations, anything like that. Again, this is just our favorite, but be sure to have something in your car to nibble on in case you need it, you know, just to get you through a little bit of time. It's amazing how big of a difference just a little bit of food to nibble on makes when you're in a tough situation. A couple of years ago, I was taking a trip down to Vegas, right at the height of civil unrest, as we'll call it. And I was like, somebody has to have written an article or put something up about maybe smart things to bring with you in case you're stuck in one of those situations, you know, maybe involuntarily you get surrounded by one of these types of groups. So I put together something I call a dummy kit. I call it a dummy kit because it might be useful when you are faced with a group of people who are upset about their financial situation. And so to protest that, they destroy their means of advancing themselves financially. And I'll leave it at that. So this was a absolutely brilliant idea. So mechanics and construction workers use this thing called a bump cap. And I saw that, I'm like, man, that's so smart. So I keep this uh, in my car now as part of my dummy kit. And so let me show you what this is. It's basically a little skull cap that has some padding in it, almost similar to the inside of a football helmet, if you're familiar with those. Uh, very breathable, because it's got all those holes and venting punched into it. You just take a normal baseball hat. This is just a plain flex fit hat. Man, I've had this thing for maybe 25 years. So all you do is drop that in, get it aligned, and you take the sweatband, and you just pop it over the top, and it just sits right inside as an insert into your hat. Now mechanics, construction workers, those guys love this. Again, it's called a bump cap for all those little bumps. If you're under a car, you're getting up, this thing really shields that. Now, you know, I spend hours and hours prepping my hair for this type of shoot. So we're gonna have Chris go ahead and demo those for us real quick. So yeah, fits perfect on the, fits perfect on the hat. Just throw it on. Here, let me get a, let me get a two by four here real quick. All right, well, so do not. Here, trust me, trust me. All right, here we go, ready? Are you feeling that? Mm -mm. No. Okay, nice. so. so bump cap there, that's the first piece in our dummy kit. Now I will say this, um, I know from personal experience, when I was six, uh, we were out playing in the lawn and you may remember that we had the milk crates like this, but they had sharp points on them. And so kids were being kids and throwing them around and I got hit right on the back of the head with the corner of one of these things Man, I was gushing. Only needed five stitches, but yeah, it, it looked like more than that. But this kind of thing, I am absolutely confident that, you know, if somebody is absolutely launching a brick at your head, you know, it's still gonna, you know, not feel good. But that will take the abuse of just kind of random debris getting thrown around and definitely prevent um, those kind of little things that can turn into big things. So bump cap right there, like a mini hard hat for you. Next throw on your uh, your neutral bandana and have a nice dark sweatshirt to throw on. I prefer a zip one instead of pullover so you can get it on quickly, take it off. So again, I'm just gonna call this, for lack of seeing a better term for it, this is our dummy kit. Now next, I gotta grab the name on this one real quick because this was another one of those recommendations on our Facebook post that we said we'd give our, uh, our buddy a call out on. So this was Cameron. Cameron, this was a great idea. This goes by many names. Some call it a silcock key, some call it a cabinet key. 
others would call it other things, but essentially what this is, is it's a multi-tool for opening utilities. So uh, like elevators, um, sometimes if you see a tamper-proof spigot for water, you can't, it doesn't have the normal knob on it, but one of these keys will open it up. So accessing utilities and getting in, and I'm gonna leave it there and not go into maybe uh, illegal activities with it, but very, very smart little tool to have on you to access things. So, Silcock key. Okay, next thing. Man, I was digging through my garage. I think I might have buried it in my basement in the move. I forgot a better one of these, but this is just a, a hand-powered pump for gas. So if you get stuck somewhere, and again, we typically don't encourage people to, you know, to think about things like the end of days apocalypse type preparation. This is more practical, but if you're in a situation where you need to get gas and you can get it from another tank and you need a way to get it out, these are great for that. So I do recommend having one of these in. I'll put the, I'll put the link below for the, the other one that I bought. It's one of the nicer ones with bigger tubes and like brass fittings, so it'll hold up better. And along with this, it would be a good idea to have a gas tank or a scepter tank. Now this is a five gallon one. I don't usually have this in my car. I would recommend a one gallon, but I've got that one in the back right now. So if you've got a siphon and a scepter can, and here's one more plug for the aqua brick. Let me get this back. Now, if I was in a situation where I had water supply near me, I had my water filter and I had these, but I needed gas, I would have no problem dumping my water out of this and then go filling up on gas with this thing. So again, that's one more element of the versatility of the aqua brick. Okay, now on the tail end of talking about the dummy kit, I'm, I'm basically gonna be talking about three different bags or backpacks that you should or can keep in your car, but it would be a good idea to keep a discreet, non-military uh, looking, non-tactical you know, uh, tactical looking bag in your car, just a normal athletic type bag or backpack to keep this kind of stuff in. If you see the footage of certain groups tearing up their neighborhoods, you'll often see them just having a non-discreet bag like this. So again, good to blend in there and having another bag to grab gear and go isn't such a bad idea. So that might be a good way to store this as well as some other clothing items that we're gonna jump into soon. So for obvious reasons, I'm gonna talk a little bit about defensive things here and not show them in the video, but you know, go ahead and stick your uh, boom stick of choice, you know, or either have it on you or have it in your car. Uh, you know, if you're in a place where you can't do that, you know, some, some good slingshots are out there in options. One of our old contributors used to hunt deer with slingshots. So, I mean, they can, they can definitely do that. If you can't do something like that, have pepper spray in your car. You can keep that in your console. Have a knife with you if you're in a place where you can have that. Another good thing to have with you is either binoculars or monocular. Now, I have my monocular, I think, in another bag right now, but that's not a bad thing to have in your car. Some people will even get those uh, 100x zoom lenses for their iPhone so they can use that for viewing off in a distance. And even if you want to go the extra mile, uh, a lot of people are using commercial drones now, over-the-counter drones, for surveillance. So if you want to kind of peer around the, the bend a little bit, you can send a drone up and see what's going on. So anyway, those are kind of things that we didn't necessarily want to show too much, but just mention and you can think about. Also, another good thing to keep with you is obviously some money. If something really terrible happens and people are still accepting some form of currency, it's a good idea to have that on you to help you get to, you know, back to your home, back to your family or get somewhere safe. Okay, one more thing on that. Uh, again, depending where you're at and how serious you are, maybe what your occupation is, it's not a bad idea to have zip ties or maybe even flex cuffs with you. So you can have those things on you. Again, your, your laws and whatever, your state ordinances may vary where you're at, but just something to consider. All right, one more thing right on the tail end of the zip ties, because some of you are probably gonna ask, is absolutely we recommend having some sort of rope or cordage. Usually I keep that in my camping bag, which we're going to get to in a little bit, but I also like to keep a roll of duct tape in the car. Now this one has seen many years in a car, which is why it's so beat to shreds, but it is still very sticky and still very functional. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in the kit. So let's talk about communication for a little bit. So if you have a rig that you have a CB radio in, that's awesome. If you know how to use it, that's even better. So you have a means to communicate. It's also a really good idea to keep some, I don't wanna call them disposable, but some inexpensive radios on hand because if for some reason comms go down, and this is not that uncommon, whether it's a storm, whether it's some sort of uh, disaster, anything that happens that 
floods the network, can bring down the network, so you can't necessarily communicate over the, over the cell waves. So it's a good idea to have some form of communication. So, and, and again, sometimes you may get back in your car somewhere where you just don't have a, a cell signal anyway. So uh, these are little ones. We've actually tested these. We did these videos in a test, these versus some rhinos. And then also the Baofeng, man, I don't know how many of these things are floating around right now. The uh, UV, I think it's the 5R model so many of these but uh, in our in our neighborhood here we have kind of an emergency response plan set up we have ze several zone captains and these are the radios that we use when we do a drill to all check in so we've got program stations on here that we use for that if you guys are interested in that go ahead and let us know in the comments if you want to see kind of how we run that drill one we're doing up in uh, October, I believe. So if you're interested, let us know in the comments. So again, have a good means of communication besides just your mobile. So that aside, next we'll talk about clothing a little bit more. All right, so real quick before we move on to clothing, I thought we should throw this in. Now, many of you already have one of these, maybe five of these know what this is, but this is just a hand crank radio. So if you want to turn on the emergency broadcast, whatever you got this, and this particular model also has a built-in solar thing, so you can just leave it out, solar thing, solar panel, so you can just leave it out and get that going. So we actually just had this on, we were testing it. What do we have that on AM, right? And we turn the volume. We had it on the wide band. Turn the volume up. Then you can toot through there and find your station. Where were you finding the emergency broadcast there, Chris? That's why we have camera. All right, so wideband Mercy Channel, you can hear it going right now. So again, really easy, really handy to have, really cheap. I, again, I'll put this in the link in the uh, the article below, but I think these are like 10 bucks, 12 bucks, so really cheap, good to have on you. So anyway, Mercy Radio. All right, now let's talk clothing. And I'm gonna start from the feet going up. So first off, Minus 33 sent us some things last year that we've been checking out and we absolutely love everything that they've sent us so far. They've been great products and we're gonna include a few of those in here plus some other stuff, okay? But just wanted to let you know, that's something that's included in here that was sent to us by a company. So let's actually start with that. With our socks, so this is their heavy, I think they call it expedition weight, but these things are amazingly comfortable so this is merino wool and it's been brushed and treated in such a way that it's soft it's not scratchy so warm these things are odor resistant and i know i'm sound like i'm selling them here but they're awesome so i love the merino or the minus 33 stuff that they sent us so a pair of socks here uh, they also have i mean this if you want to go the inexpensive route too these are just some of the wool socks that you can pick up at costco now I'm gonna jump around to different base layers, but I do have a set of the Costco base layers as well. They're really lightweight, but again, it's just nice to throw on an extra level or layer. So I keep that in a bag here. And then let's keep going from the feet. So I like to keep a pair of boots in my car that I can wear in the snow and multiple terrain that have good traction that are comfortable. So these are Sorrells. So I've had these for a few years like these. Now let's talk a little bit as far as, I just have the inexpensive base layers there, but uh, minus 33 did send us out some of theirs and they are just amazing. So I took them snowboarding, I wore those, tried in some different places. They're warm without being stuffy and then they're not scratchy, just love them. They don't get stinky like other stuff, like you know when you get in your polyesters, those can be really funky. Anyway, so you got base layers there. Another thing working up that I'm a big, big fan of are neck gaiters or buffs, whatever you want to call them. My wife made me this one from, from wool yarn there. This is one that is more versatile uh, with the longer fabric. This is from minus 33. Love this thing. So you can use this in multiple ways. It's lightweight enough that, you know, again, it's not gonna get too stuffy on you, but if you crumple this all up in your neck, it kind of forms those layers that can keep you nice and insulated and you can use it for other things. Very versatile piece of kit. Obviously they also have their standard wool beanies that you can pick up. Now, just for funsies, again, I have something else that my wife made me here. Here's kind of my uh, Scandinavian beard. I can throw this one on. That's a really, really thick hoodie with the beard if you want to keep your face warm. Again, I'm not saying you need to have that, but I figured I would just show it to you. Next level, obviously have like an extra t-shirt, maybe extra pants if you want it. But on your next layer, again, if you're getting cold, I love having a down vest. Now, these are packable ones that you can just pack up like this. 
Down is amazing because it is so lightweight, very soft. I mean, you do have to watch out for weather with these a little bit. Let me get this thing opened up for you. It's packed down into its own pocket. There we go. So you just pop it out. And I went on a camping trip. Let's see, this was two months ago. I took my daughter up to something called a girls camp and there was lots and lots of girls there. And uh, I wanted to check out the area of the campsite, big reason that I went. And uh, we set up camp and it was in the middle of summer but it was high up on the mountains and it dropped down to 28 degrees at night. Now I only had a, it wasn't really a true full se four season sleeping bag, it was a three. But I threw this on as well as some other layers and I didn't even feel it, didn't even wake up. These things are so nice at creating dead air around you and insulating you. So I like to have this vest packed down. Next layer up is have a waterproof shell. So this is just a rain jacket. This is an inexpensive one. We might do a video here not too long where we show you some different rain jackets get into it. But a nice lightweight packable shell. These are great because you can throw them in a backpack. They take no space, no weight and then you can pull them out when you need them. You can also have a poncho, so rain jacket. Now, if you want to really go over the top, if you're in a cold environment, I will often just leave my snow clothes, right here's a lift ticket, but I'll often just leave my snow clothes in my car. So if I really need that extra layer, I've already got it in there ready to go. And I don't go often enough to where it's really a, a hassle. And I'll often, when I'm in the parking lot, that's where I throw all my snow pants and my coat anyway. So I'll just leave it in the car. So I think we've covered everything on clothing. So again, great thing to have, maybe tuck all this into a backpack so you've got it all packed up and tight. But if you, again, treat it like a mobile closet, right? If you have all these things ready to go, you're prepared wherever you're at. So we just talked about cold environments, but what about hot environments? Now we're in the high desert here in Utah and I often travel down through like Nevada, Death Valley, that kind of stuff into California. So I'm also trying to be conscious of heat. Now for me, I'm a pretty light skinned dude and you know i don't like slathering up the sunscreen that much i love these kind of shirts now columbia makes these for this is a popular brand for fishing but i absolutely love this i'll even take this when i go to like disneyland you throw this guy on this is 50 spf i mean any fabric is going to have some sort of sun protection in it super lightweight stays cool reflects the light and you can keep it on there and then what i complete this ensemble with is i've got my panama jack kind of outback style hat and that creates a nice microclimate for me that's reflecting the heat it's all vented and keeping me cool even when I'm in the sun so that's preventing me from getting burned dehydrated and all that kind of stuff so I try to factor for both climates whether it's going to be extremely cold or extremely hot continuing the cold weather concept so I keep two pairs of gloves in my car when we're talking about being ready for the cold. So these are those lightweight, more like uh, almost runner's types gloves. They're, they're kind of that neoprene type material that you can also use like your phone with and whatnot. These are usually, even when we get cold up here in the mountains, these are usually pretty good for me if I'm not out that long. But again, if I'm going to be in the snow or out, I've got different, obviously different winter gloves. These are just a pair of mittens. These can be nice because these have a liner for individual fingers, but those mittens can kind of keep your hands nice and warm. But again, waterproof here. So that covers us from head to toe for different type of clothing to keep in your car. Okay, so I mentioned we're gonna talk about a few different bags in this. So let me first talk about EDC. So depending on what your profession is or what you normally carry out with you, you know, if you've got more of the kind of the messenger style bag or the professional backpack, whatever, we're not gonna go into the details in this video about what to include in it, but have your kit. We've got that video on bricks. We'll put a link to that up here. Your blade, rope, ignition, container, shelter. You should always have those in whatever bag you take out. So anyway, your EDC bag, and then, you, you know, usually that's gonna be on you. So if you're going somewhere, that's gonna be in your car. I also like to leave my backpack and your camping bag in my car. Now, the only reason I really need to take this out is if, you know, we're, we're going somewhere and I gotta trade it out with luggage or something, but otherwise it just stays right here. And this is fully decked out. So in this, I have shelter, sleeping pad, some more food, um, my fire, my rope, all that kind of stuff. So. If I've got this in my car, that already takes care of a lot of my, my necessities or things that I may need. So I just leave this in here again, cutting tools, that kind of stuff. So that's that. And we could have mentioned this earlier on, but if we're bringing it up now, it's a great idea to have a analog road atlas in your car, you know, with a quick index of where your state is, how to get to it. 
So, you know, we all tend to rely on Google Maps now on our phone, but what happens when you can't have access to that? Unfortunately, a lot of people nowadays can't even navigate without, you know, Siri telling them which way to turn. So have a map, be familiar with how to use it and have that in your car always. All right, so sometimes I'll just leave these in my car. We've got a little fishing hole nearby that I like to take my kids to sometimes. So we got a kind of a junior rod and a bigger one. These are just ugly sticks that are, that are pre-spooled. You know, they've got the, uh, the reel on them already. Now these things can be taken down and stuffed in like a tube if you want to pack them down more. Again, I just don't need the hassle of that because it's really close. I just throw them in the back here. So anyway, having a fishing kit. Now there are some really cool ones. Again, if you have a car and you don't want to look too weird having a fishing kit in your car, they have these really neat little kit ones. I'll put a link down to some where they collapse down to basically a little almost um, uh, taco style padded envelope that you can take them in. So those are really neat. Great idea to keep a bag or to keep a roll of construction bags with you. You can fill these up to make a mattress. You can get carry debris with these. You can carry water with these. You can do all sorts of cool stuff with these. Make a shelter with these. Tons and tons of stuff that you can do with them. Pretty inexpensive. I mean, you wouldn't want to carry this on your back, but when you can just throw it in your car, not a big deal. I think my blanket's at Chris's house. I think I might've left it over there, but I've got a nice 100% um, wool it's the old kind of surplus blanket and I always keep that in the back of my car unless it's missing but anyway I keep that blanket in my car I love the wool because it stays warm even when it's wet super durable holds up I mean the thing's like 70 years old and it looks almost like it's brand new so I'll keep that blanket in my car now the next thing is there's several different options you can go with this but it's a good idea to have some sort of tarp in your car so we'll give you a couple options Okay, now depending on the type of camping you do, you may already have one of these in your camping bag or your backpacking bag, but this is a Bushcraft USA tarp. I think this one's five foot by seven foot. Really lightweight, sill nye with the, the really um, durable tie outs there. So that's one option. If you wanna go a little more economy and, and cover more space, I think this guy's a, I think this one's a 13 by 18 foot, just a Wally World special here. This is really nice. Now, if you want to get out, you can fly a canopy over your car. You can make yourself a legitimate shelter kind of pavilion with a tent, with a tarp like this, as well as the utility it offers. So I keep one of these, not only for the things I just mentioned, but if I throw my trailer on the back of the car, I can use this to cover up the load, tie it down. So anyway, having a tarp in your car is a great idea. All right, let's talk heating options real quick. As we mentioned in the beginning of the video, we talked about all those people that were stuck on the 95 in Virginia over the winter and how they were basically shivering and freezing in their cars. Not that that's funny, but that's a stinky situation. So there's several low cost options that you can, you know, throw in your car to prevent you from being in that terrible a situation. So Ignic has sent us lots of stuff. Like this is one of their uh, week long warm packs. So this includes hand warmers, foot warmers. Let me actually show you what these look and kind of these utility ones that you can stick wherever. So inside your pockets, inside your vest. So this is what they look like, uh, similar to um, what are they called? <coughs> Hot hands. But these are a little bit different. These are air activated and you can put these back in the container, seal them up. They all have a zipper pack on them and then you can take them out and use them later. Whereas once you activate something like a hot hands, once that heat's gone, it's gone. You can't save it for later. So this is that week long pack, something like that. And then these, I mean, these have been around for a long time, these little Yuko lanterns, but one candle in these burns for nine hours and they produce a surprising amount of heat. Now, if you're gonna burn anything like this in your car, if you're staying in your car, you gotta make sure to crack a window. Sometimes uh, people who do overlanding or RVs even put a carbon monoxide sensor in their car so they know if, if anything's going wrong. But as long as you crack a window, you should be fine. But these guys will burn for nine hours and produce a surprising amount of heat, you know, stave off that freezing temperature in your car. So that's on the heating side. Now we've got two more things to cover and they kind of are a little bit sequential. So it's a good idea to keep, based on where you're at, it's a good idea to keep different tools in your car. So a saw, again, in my backpack kit, I always have the saw and the ax, that's great. But we've got a friend that lives out in North Carolina, for instance, and when a hurricane came through and knocked down all the trees in his truck, he kept a chainsaw. Now these DeWalt ones, I've actually put some work on this thing and I've been surprised with how this chews through logs. It's a 12 inch blade and it's got no problem going through stumps and cutting rounds. I've been really surprised with it. And it only takes the uh, 60 volt battery from DeWalt, this guy. So if you've got a charger in your car and the battery or a couple battery packs and you've got some tools, 
I mean, you're ready to rock and roll if you need to go cut lumber, if you just want to keep this, again, if you if you work on a farm or if you live in the uh, the woods or, or, you know, just out in the wilderness somewhere, it's a good idea to have something like this handy. You may also even see bolt cutters or uh, like an angle grinder. Now, I'm showing you this the specific reason. So this is battery powered. This one you've got to plug in. Now, sometimes you've got a car like I've got a uh, plug in on the back of my 4Runner here, but what is the answer if you need electricity to plug into something or to charge things? So that's what we're going to hop into next and spend some time on it. But again, keep, you know, what kind of tools do you need? and throw those in your car. All right, so right at the beginning of the video when we talked about the, the Venture Jump, that was the jump box to start your car if you need to, road, roadside emergency type thing. Now, I have a bigger kit. I have a Yeti 1500, and when I talked to the representative, it was Mary Kate over at Goal Zero, I said, hey, we're shooting this video, and we wanna to try to find something that produces a good amount of energy, but that you could leave in your car, and that could power most of the things that you need. She said, hey, I have just the thing. So this is the Yeti 500, and then these are the Nomad panels. Now I have the bolder panels, which are those big thick ones and the big briefcase things, but the, the Nomad series was designed to be lightweight and mobile. So that's the setup. Now for most of the shoot, we've actually had the setup over here and Chris was charging like our audio and batteries and other things while shooting. And we're out in the sun and it was pulling, what did it peak at, 40 watts? So this is a 50 watt panel. I thought I got up to like 42 at some point. Might have gotten up a little bit higher, but I mean, if you know anything about solar, they can be finicky. They have to be like lined up perfect, but we were netting energy, even charging the batteries, running the audio, all that. We were producing more in the sun than we were using with this setup, which was pretty impressive. So when these fold down, these are still pretty hot from being in the sun, but these things collapse down into a nice tight little package. I don't even know if, yep, yep, I'm folding it up the right way. Almost like an envelope here. And it folds down like that. That's the kit, this is a 50 watt panel. Now they have 100 watt, they also have 200 watt. Obviously those are gonna be bigger. But for most people in your car, I mean, if you're serious about overlanding and that kind of stuff, obviously you wanna go bigger. But for most people, this is more than enough. This is overkill to charge your laptop, your phone, your batteries, flashlights, camera equipment, whatever you need. This is plenty, plenty to do it. And now the way that I have it set up is I, I'm going to leave this in here and plugged into the 12 volt in the back and we can get you some B-roll of this so you get an up close shot. So on the 12 volt, in most cars, check to make sure this is the case for you, but in most cars that's designed to not provide power when the car's shut off. So if you just leave this thing plugged in, whenever you're driving, it'll be kicking juice into here and top it off, but whenever you stop, it won't keep pulling power. So I feel pretty good about just leaving this back here and not having it plugged in. Some of you experts in the, out there may comment about how, whatever your ideas are on that. And then we can just have the, the Venture Jump right here plugged in also, so it's always ready to go and to jump a car when, uh, when needed. So thanks again to Goal Zero for sending this out. We're big fans of them. If you want to, we're gonna go ahead and put a link if you wanna pick up any Goal Zero equipment. Again, we like it, I bought it before my own money. Go ahead and use the link below. Really good stuff. There's other options out there. But again, this is what I've used. I've tested it. I believe in it. So that is what it is. So, okay, to recap, we've covered lots of things today. So what you should have in your car, pretty much no matter where you're at, and then other things to consider based on your environment, surroundings, and where you may be going, what you may be doing. The idea here is to get you thinking. Again, if you want a quick ready reference, we'll put that link to the article below so you can see all the different items as well as links to where you can get that kind of stuff. Hopefully this was helpful for you. And again, if you like this survival makeover type setup, please go ahead and leave us a like. We'll get a hundred of those. We'll, we'll pick up the series and do another one. And until next time, in Omnia Paratus.